Obi-Wan, more like Obi-Gone from Relevance, sorry. But is he? Is old Ben returning to the main Star Wars saga in a big way? Find out on Nerdist News. We're gonna. With the first Star Wars anthology film, Rogue One, coming out in just a few short weeks, we're starting to get pretty amped by amped. the idea of even more spin-offs to come. I mean, why would we focus on what's just directly in front of us? We are proper nerds. Proper. We, have, we have our cards. We gotta keep our eyes on the future, dudes. Oh man, the future? That'd be pretty cool. Six. Right, and with episode 8, the Han Solo spin-off, and the close of sequel trilogy, episode 9 ahead of us, we're wondering, What's next? There's know. the Boba Fett movie that Josh Trank was attached to, which is now uh, stuck in the Sarlacc pit of development hell. Give us, give hey us that fat. There's our very own pitch for when Yoda met Yaddle, a romantic comedy that would fill us in on exactly what <laughs> happened in that lusty affair that, in many ways, is a cornerstone of the entire Star Wars franchise. Is it? Yeah, look up Yoda Yaddle sex toy. Don't do it oh. in front of your parents, that's, but it's an amazing story. That's a subreddit I'm not subscribed to. And then, of course, there's the one spinoff literally every Star Wars fan has been clamoring for since the possibility of spinoffs presented themselves in the first place. And Jar Jar B so, uh, an Obi-Wan movie. Yeah, Obi-Wan. Like three, or five, or ten of them. Obi There's ten. a lot of time that passed between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, and while we know that Ben spent plenty of it watching over Baby Luke, there's a whole lot of room for some Jedi badassery in there. <laughs> Just watching Baby Luke. Hey, he's sleeping. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> You are the chosen one still! <laughs> Strike oh, wait, me wrong down. Guy. Wrong guy. <laughs> I love death sticks. Uh, I mean, seriously, guys, just imagine Obi-Wan is sort of this, like, Ronin, a masterless samurai roaming the galaxy, doing good and trying to redeem the parts of himself that feel responsible for Anakin's fall into lava and the Emperor's rise out of lava. While we're psyched for both Boba Fett and Han Solo movies, we're not sure yet where the story comes from and what kind of fresh insight we can actually get into those characters, but with Obi-Wan, it's abundantly clear. So why haven't we gotten the Obi-Wan dodecology we so rightfully deserve? Yeah! Well, Entertainment Weekly writer and Star Wars News savant Anthony Bresnik uh, thinks he might know. Oh. While talking to Rebel Force Radio, old Brezzy spilled a pretty damn ju <laughs> Old Brezzy. Old Brezzy. Kid. Back in my day. Uh, we only had this sweet, juicy rumor, which he <laughs> believes to be true, that an Obi-Wan spinoff is on hold until after episode 9 because the sequel trilogy ain't done with him yet. Say what? Ah, you heard what I said? Could Ewan McGregor actually show up in one of the next two saga films? Is there some reveal coming that's so major it would have to be addressed in any potential Obi-Wan spin-offs? Well, it looks like all signs point to yes. But what could it be? Well, Dan, the easiest and likeliest guess is that Rey's lineage is somehow tied back to old B1. Ooh. We know that her mysterious parentage will be revealed in episode 8, and that the manifestation of her Force abilities began with a flashback in which she heard Obi-Wan himself calling out to her. So, could she be a secret Kenobi? Secret Kenobi! Secret Kenobi! Perhaps an illegitimate granddaughter Ooh, Mulan Rage? Wow! I mean, he did spend a lot of time secluded on Tatuan. You're telling me he didn't bang a single Jawa? Not a single Jawa. He banged all the Jawas. Oh. And he's almost definitely a Rey ancestor, making it rather poetic that Luke will now have to train his master's descendant. But what form will the Obi-Wan reveal take? How are they going to introduce the new kind of complicated wrinkle to Star Wars lore? Are we going to see true flashbacks for the first time in Star Wars history? Like, not in the form of a weird trip-out sequence, but actual legit flashbacks? Are we going to see, like, a Force ghost that for some reason looks like middle-aged Obi-Wan <laughs> instead of, like, old Obi-Wan? No, for God's sake, stop redacting Force Ghosts. My heart can't take Kyle it. Kyle feels strongly about Force Ghosts. Perhaps more strongly than anything else in pop culture. Sure. It's his passion. Sure. Look at his Pinterest board. Leave the Force Ghosts alone, please. <laughs> Dude loves ghosts! <laughs> Look. Busting Force Ghosts makes me feel good. Look, however they wind up nodding to Obi-Wan in the sequel trill, let's all keep our fingers crossed that the 19 film series that'll bridge the gap between oh. the young Obi-Wan and old Obi-Wan will give us what we all want in the deepest, truest hearts of hearts. Or, or not. Or, it could be, Jawa Six. But what do you guys think? Is Rey Obi-Wan's granddaughter? How do you think they'll actually fold Kenobi into the sequel trilogy? And how many Obi-Wan movies do you actually want? And how many alien species do you want to see Obi-Wan bang? It's not a desecration of your sacred Jedi vow of celibacy if no one's around to see you do das bangin'. Let's, Let's discuss. discuss.
All right, folks, thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Nerdist News, but don't go anywhere because today at 3 p.m. on Nerdist.com slash Twitch, we're going to be talking about everything related to Obi-Wan plus some other amazing topics on a brand new episode of Nerdist News Talks Back. Which we're co-hosting. Yeah! Yeah! And if you want to see Dan and myself get even nerdier, you can check out our latest Musk Watch video where we're covering all things Musk. Musk mm. Check us out over at, at Nerdist and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Nerdist News. <laughs>